And now the latest across the wide world of tropics. Tropic Weather Bulletin for September the 20th. Today across the wide world of tropics we have two active tropical cyclones, those being Tropical Storms Peter and Rose on day 263 of 2021. So far we've had 70 storms form and it's looking more likely that that will rise over the next few days. In the Atlantic Basin on day 112 of hurricane season, again Tropical Storms Peter and Rose are now a thing. Um, expect it to remain weak and not bring significant impacts to any land areas. Odette, we're monitoring that system. You may remember that it was a brief tropical storm off the east coast of the United States. It has the potential to reform as a tropical or subtropical cyclone in that area that I've marked west of the Azores. And a tropical wave that has emerged off the coastline of Africa today now has a 50% chance of forming as it generally tracks into that area of formation southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. I'll be watching that one very closely. In the Eastern Pacific on day 128 of hurricane season, we have an area of interest here. A 30% chance on this one. I don't expect that to go too much higher unless we see significant development with a low pressure area that's expected to form as it, as it attracts further northwards. It's going to be running into cooler sea surface temperatures, which means it's on a time uh, to really try and form. In the Western Pacific, we have no storms and no areas of interest active here. Same case in the Northern Indian Ocean. Different case in the Southern Indian Ocean though, we have no tropical cyclones, but we have an area of interest where a tropical cyclone could form. 30% chance on this one. If it were to form, it would likely be a weak, short-lived system, but nonetheless, could be an early start for the Southern Hemisphere this year. As we get towards the satellite imagery in the Northern Hemisphere, the Atlantic Basin is active tonight with Tropical Storm uh, Peter there northeast of the Leeward Islands. Looking pretty bad, I'm going to be honest at this point. The convection is off to the east. It's dealing with some dry air and maybe even some wind shear there. I see an upper level low there, what it looks like. And Rose is further east, not expected to last too much longer. Um, may peak with winds around 50 miles per hour and then die out later this week. The tropical wave off, uh, that just came off of Africa is not looking too hot at this time, but it's I got about a 50% chance at this point of forming. And you can see the remnants of Odette there, could, which could reform, bringing some significant impacts to Atlantic Canada. In the Eastern Pacific, we have no real signs here of tropical cyclone formation yet. That is expected to change once again as we do have that area of interest. If it were to form, it's likely to be a short-lived system. It may not get even too strong before it reaches the colder sea surface temperatures. In the Western Pacific, we have general thunderstorm activity here throughout the equatorial regions and into the Philippines and South China Sea. Not really anything signifying uh, tropical cyclone formation here. And uh, models aren't really suggesting anything over the next couple of days either. In the Northern Indian Ocean, we have that general monsoonal activity as typical over India and the Bay of Bengal. And in the Southern Indian Ocean, we have that blob of thunderstorms south of the equator. That is our area of interest and we're watching it closely to see if the Southwest Indian Ocean wants an early start this year. Quick reminder that we are getting a bit closer to Southern Hemisphere season's beginning. The sea surface temperatures across the world tonight for Eastern Pacific area of interest. It's looking pretty warm for a certain time. As I said, it's, it's on a timer, really, of if it can form while it's in the sea surface, warm sea surface temperatures. As you can see, they quite quickly drop off as it tracks further north. The North Atlantic, on the other hand, is very warm, piping hot for all of our systems. Even for Odette, it's actually looking pretty good for potential subtropical or tropical cyclone formation there. So we're still well within hurricane season here, so we need to monitor everything that the Atlantic throws at us uh, up to the end of hurricane season. In the Indian Ocean, we're mainly looking towards the Southern Indian Ocean area of interest. We're generally looking 28, sorry, no, 26 to 27 degrees Celsius waters, maybe peaking into 28 degrees Celsius degree waters near the equator. Um, but again, 30% chance, low chance at this time. 
likely to be a short-lived system if it were to form. And in the Western Pacific, you can see that is a real just difference to, compared to the rest of the world. Piping hot, general 30 to 31 degrees Celsius waters there. Piping hot for any system that has the right conditions. The sea surface temperature anomalies. The Atlantic is generally above average, and this is typical at this point. It is recovering now at a pretty good rate from Larry and Ida and Nicholas. The Eastern Pacific is looking generally above average. The Central Pacific near to below average. And the Western Pacific, we're generally above average here as well. And the Indian Ocean generally looking again to that area of interest. It is above average there, so it is a bit favorable season of temperature wise for the, uh, the potential of the Southwest Indian Ocean starting early. Looking towards the On This Day segment provided by Cyclone History, today was a pretty historic day in 1967. We had Major Hurricane Beulah, which was a Category 5 in the western Gulf of Mexico, which would eventually track towards northeastern Mexico. I, I'm not sure what landfall intensity it had, but I can tell you it was certainly a very destructive hurricane um, and you can see that satellite imagery there. This was towards the start of our current satellite era, which began in 1966. We also had Tropical Depression Doria, uh, northeast of the Bahamas. That one was dying out. Tropical Storms Monica and Nanette were in the Eastern Pacific. And Typhoons Wanda and Sarah were active. Sarah, four days uh, earlier, was impacting an island, which I cannot remember the name of at this point, as... Uh, I believe it was a significant typhoon. I know it earlier in its life it was a super typhoon, so very significant systems across the whole world on this day in 1967. Another worthy to note on this day, um, 2017, uh, Hurricane Maria was approaching Puerto Rico, it was a Category 5 um, at Zero Zulu, um, 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time would weaken to a 155 mile per hour category four before making a catastrophic landfall in Puerto Rico. Certainly a historic and devastating, I'd say catastrophic hurricane actually, that will be remembered for decades and centuries to come. Moving back into 2021, the Atlantic Basin has neared the auxiliary, auxiliary list once again it sounds comfortably close for a lot of us. The next two names are Sam and Teresa. Would like to note if Odette were to reform, it would keep the name Odette. In the Eastern Pacific, Pamela and Rick are next on this list. In the Central Pacific, at this point, I'm not in uh, belief that Hone will form this year. I'm just betting on it will form next year. Maybe not. You never know with Hone. It's a stubborn little storm. In the Western Pacific, we're now in a bit of, an, of, of a quiet period after Constant and Shanthu, but we're looking out nonetheless for Dianmu and Mandul. In the Northern Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Gulab and Shaheen. In the Southern Hemisphere, again, we're getting closer, about a month away to the Southern Hemisphere season starting. In the Australian region, we're looking out for Patty, followed by Ruby. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Anna, followed by Batsarai. And in South Pacific, we're looking out for Cody, followed by Dovey. Thank you so much for watching this Tropic Weather Bulletin, and we'll have another one tomorrow night.